Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday Live with John Coggy, who is, by the way, on his way to Cyprus, because we're going to have an event. We'll be at the uh, Paper World in Dubai. It's an honor to be with everyone else today, and of course, an honor to host Lorraine for our session. And yeah, we are all familiar with how uh, the program flows for our Friday session. Fridays are always about the artists, and you have here, of course, the one time to ask and connect with Lorraine. And yeah, let's just say welcome to Lorraine and to everyone else. Yay! Thank you for having me. Um, we're going to start, Lorraine, with a PowerPoint, because as usual, we'd like our audience to directly connect with you even after the session. So let me do a share screen here. Okay. Lorraine is from Colorado. And of course, the best way and the easy way to connect with Lorraine and keep me inspired, be inspired by her creative journey is to connect with Lorraine through her Instagram. Instagram, Instagram handle, we have Lorraine what tree, what tree? Underscore yes. watercolor. And of course, it's also on Facebook. This is Lorraine's beautiful website. If you are uh, interested for workshops and classes, just click on the third tab from the left. You see their home, gallery, and classes. Easy to remember, just type in lorrainewatrystudio.com. And of course, uh, she's also on YouTube. The next couple of slides, Lorraine, are uh, your sample artworks. And we'd love to hear a line or two for each of these beautiful works here. We start with this one. Okay, so this is uh, bamboo and lilies, and um, I had painted several uh, water lily paintings, and I love to paint uh, reflections in water, and uh, this was at the uh, Denver Botanic Gardens, and there was a bamboo sculpture that they had placed in the water, and it was creating these really interesting reflections around the water lilies, and um, I was playing with the idea of having something that is um, natural, the flowers, and then uh, kind of ge geometric shapes sort of around it in the water. And um, so I, I pushed the envelope, I think a little bit on this one with all of the detail and the patterning. Uh, this is uh, one of my flamingo paintings. And uh, this one uh, was uh, juried into Birds and Art, which is a international exhibition for birds and um, I uh, wanted the heads of the birds to be um, sort of layered and graphic shapes and I blurred the foreground feathers uh, in order to make them not be as important as the heads. Uh, this painting went to Fabriano and uh, it was uh, a painting that uh, was of my son. He's the taller one there. And uh, he was in marching band in high school. And uh, I loved the, the bright uh, red and the reflections in the horns. And um, as you can see, I'm still playing with uh, reflections even in metal. This is one of my bird paintings and a hummingbird. This is a Rufus hummingbird. and uh, I do a lot of planting in the summer in my garden and to, to attract the hummingbirds. And um, I just really enjoyed uh, the light on this bird and uh, the kind of sort of simple background. Uh, these two are birds in water and uh, the swan, um, is, I can't remember what exhibition it was in, but was awarded, um, I can't remember the uh, award at this point either, but won an award and I loved the uh, warm glow in the water and the pattern behind the bird. And then the one on the right was a demonstration that I did for a group and 
uh, it was kind of my first experience painting with Indian Throne and not Indian Threen, because I just learned recently that there is an Indian Threen, um, but Daniel Smith's Indian Throne. And I love uh, that color for deep blue water. It was, it was great to work with. And then this is uh, one of my uh, glass paintings and uh, it's titled Some of My Favorite Things. And uh, so I have lots of different glass pieces I've collected and some of them are birds. So I had to include those. And uh, then I used uh, one of my um, color uh, swatches uh, underneath it and that created lots of interesting reflections into some of the glass and uh, just a variety of objects. Um, I love to travel, so that for therefore the Eiffel Tower. And um, when I finished my brush out of the corner of my eye, it kept feeling so realistic. I kept trying to pick it up to put it away. <laughs> so it was fooled myself. <laughs> okay, I think this is the last one. On the okay, screen. and then this is one of my landscapes. So I paint a variety of subjects, and uh, I just really enjoyed um, the uh, glow of the yellow leaves and uh, the warm glow on the trunks for this painting. Thank you. And just before we start with the demo proper, I think it's but proper to mention that in front of us, Lorraine is actually uh, the cur currently, she's the vice president and newsletter director for the National Watercolor Society, that's NWS, and slated to become the president of NWS in 2024 and 2025. Yay! So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, what really makes Friday Live with John Cogley special is the, the opportunity to connect with different artists of experience. And yeah, we have like Lorraine today. And so if anyone here in our guests in Zoom and Facebook wondering like, oh, how do we get connected with NWS, do connect with Lorraine and the organization. And also just again, just before we start the demo proper, in case you have questions, we will be help with Anna Marie and I think Angela, if if she can. Um, so our guests on Facebook. Yes, sure. Feel free to type in your messages for Lorraine, not just questions, but if you have anything to say for Lorraine, we will be more than happy to read them out for Lorraine. Okay, so Lorraine, whenever you're ready. All right, so I'm going to change my view. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to- Myself here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Okay, so we're going to do a hummingbird today, or I'm going to do a hummingbird today. And uh, this, I have it in several, uh, I have two versions of the painting. So after I show the background, I'm going to um, bring out the other painting in process. And my photo, I always work for my own photographs and my photo uh, of the hummingbird was in my yard and there was a fence behind the bird. And so one of the first things I do is I look at my photo and I just determine if I need to adjust something. Um, sometimes, uh, not sometimes, I guess about probably 50% of the time, uh, the composition I'm happy with it. There may be some minor adjustments, but when I take my photos, I try to um, think compositionally as I'm taking the picture. And then uh, for this one, I just decided uh, that I wanted to uh, one, move this branch back here. So I moved it down a little bit. Um, I did add some flowers. So on my painting, you can see I adjusted even from what the photo is showing. So I made a few changes here, gave this um, branch a little more interest going on. And then I uh, didn't want uh, the fence back there. And I kind of liked the more neutral background. Uh, so I just, um, very simplistically in my photo uh, software, uh, made some changes to the background to soften parts of it and change it just so I could kind of see what I was thinking in my mind um, if I would like that. So it's for me, uh, it became sort of a pattern and foliage back there. And uh, the other thing I wanted to play with with, the, with this painting was what colors I want to use. So even if I don't do a full color study, uh, a lot of the time I will 
uh, do color swatches and I will lay out the colors I might be using for the painting or I might do a study. And so for this, uh, I was trying different um, colors in the background and I've really liked playing recently with uh, the Lunar series. So Lunar Black, Lunar Violet and Lunar Blue. And I decided after trying some different uh, versions that I would go with uh, Lunar Violet and it, with a mix of Quinbert uh, Scarlet um, for that. And then I also dropped in some uh, Green Appetite to give just a little bit of green back there so that the bird's green uh, was also kind of moving through the scene. And uh, let's see, let me move these. So it really can depend on the painting I'm doing. Uh, I start by doing my drawing on my paper. Uh, actually, I do my drawing on a separate piece of paper first. I make all my changes, any adjustments I need to, and then I uh, transfer it to my watercolor paper using a light table. And I use 140 pound. Um, I used to use a lot of arches, but now I love Fabriano. So I use the bright white uh, cold press and uh, 140 pound, as I said. And then once my drawing is on my paper, I stretch my paper. So you can probably see it's been stapled down. And then once it's uh, dry, then I will tape it down as well. And then I mask a lot of the time, either my main subject or different parts of the painting prior to painting, because most of my paintings, I tend to start with the background first. So it, it kind of depends on the scene, what I mask. Um, and I was talking about this to a lot of the brand ambassadors before we started. Uh, but I use uh, Scotch brand and it's uh, number 2020. And it should say, if you go to look for this tape, it should say 2020, not 2025 or some other number because the 2020 has high adhesion. Um, and so that's what I'm looking for. And what I do, uh, so just imagine that my drawing, and actually you can see if I zoom in, you can see my drawing under the tape. And so when I go to mask, I take the, the tape and I will lay down a strip of tape and I, this is the two inch. So I go for the wider tape at first and I'll just lay down a strip of tape all, all down my uh, drawing. And then you, I use a, just a clickable blade and these are um, pretty easy to, to get. And I just break off a new blade. And then I, uh, after my tape is down, then I just go around all of these lines and cut out whatever pieces I'm going to take off. And then I lay the next strip down. So you can see I've overlapped it. It's probably anywhere, probably about three eighths of an inch overlap. And then I just wanna make sure it's pressed well. And I know others have um, used other tape. I just want to make sure that it's a high adhesive tape um, for me because um, I don't want paint see seeping under it. I'm going to zoom back out. And I find for me that I get cleaner lines by using the masking tape over masking fluid. And I do use masking fluid still for really small things. The, the tip of this flower has a little piece that comes off of it. So I do have a few places like that. Um, or for little tiny circles, I don't try to cut around those. Um, I do have some videos on my YouTube channel that shows kind of my process and um, talks about some of the ins and outs of it. You should make sure that if you're going to try it, that your watercolor paper paper can handle the tape. If you if it can handle masking fluid, it can probably uh, do the tape. But so I have um, so that's kind of my process, my setup, and I'm going to be starting with a wet on wet background. And I pulled out some lunar uh, violet, and then I have my Quinn burnt scarlet. I may end up needing to get more, but I pulled those out to start. I'm going to go ahead and wet this. And then, oh, I also need to pull out, so I'll give it a few seconds, I'll, I'll wet this, and then I'll wet it again. But while I'm letting this sit for a second, uh, I need to get out my blues. And I'll be using cobalt and uh, phthalo blue turquoise. I find sometimes that cobalt's not quite the right blue and 
adding a turquoise, whether it's cerulean or the phthalo blue turquoise, or sometimes I will use um, maybe peacock or phthalo blue itself, green shade, that it changes the blue, the cobalt enough that I feel it's more what I want. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get out some cobalt. And I uh, really like silver black velvet brushes. And that is what I tend to use right now. This is a number 20. And I may need uh, maybe a touch more. So right now, because I've wet the paper, I don't need my watercolor to be uh, really wet. It's more about getting out a lot of pigment. because also the water that you add to your paper is adding, um, is lightening the color you will put on. Okay, and a little bit of phthalo blue turquoise. So I don't need a lot of that. And I'll just add some. All right. And then I'm just going to check my paper right quick. It feels like it's pretty shiny up at the top. I know by the time I get down toward the bottom, it may be already a little too dry. So I'm going to about halfway up, just go ahead and re-wet. And I would actually be okay if it's pooling just a little bit at the bottom. And it really can depend on your humidity. One of the things I'm also going to do is dry the back of my brush to make sure that it's not too wet. And for the blue, I am kind of dotting it on. I'm not going to just wash it across the whole thing because I don't necessarily want the blue uh, behind my other paint. And I am using my color study to give me an idea of where I placed some of this uh, in the color study because I like how it looks. Need a little more, didn't quite get enough. And you can see I'm not being too careful with edges or anything for this one. There are some wet on wet paintings that I do where I want, or backgrounds I should say, um, that I want uh, the lines or the shapes to kind of stay where I'm placing them. Because this is also my lighter value back here, if it um, moves and gets larger than I want, I can also change the shapes by putting my darker value near it. So now I'm going to go into the lunar violet and one of the reasons I really have been having fun playing with the lunar colors is because I like granulation. And I know that there are some that don't necessarily want granulation in what they're working on. So if you use this, just know that it is very granulating. So that's moving quite a bit. So I'm going to dry the back of my brush just to make sure that I'm not adding a lot of water to the painting. And I will work top down, so I will pause in a second over here and go to the other side before it dries. And I probably should have pulled out my green appetite to have it ready. In general, I try to um, have all my colors ready prior to uh, doing a wet on wet because when you get started on this, you, you have to keep up with it and keep moving or it can start drying on you. Um, and I also, one of the things I liked about the lunar was it the violet can go from almost a purple color to a, almost a reddish color when it as it's drying. 
Okay, keep moving down the page. I tend to paint with round brushes, um, just my preference. So my marks are going to have more of a rounded edge to them. I may have to get out more paint. I don't keep a lunar violet or the lunar pigments on my palette, so I just squeezed it out fresh this morning. And I want some darker value around the bird's head. One of the things that I noticed with the lunar um, colors is depending on, whoops, how much they're moving down the page, they do get lighter. And so right now I have it tipped on a board. I'm going to take it off of that and let it go flat. And then I'll just watch it to see if anything tries to run uphill on me. And that will help the color, that darker value, stay more where I'm placing it. So I am going back every now and then trying to, to increase the value in the area by just touching and letting some of that color go go darker. Hi Lorraine, this is Angela. Hi. Hi. Um, are you happy to answer questions while you're painting? Yes. Okay, because there is a, a, a lady here, Anna Candela, who has asked twice already, how do you control uh, when you're cutting your tape, your masking tape, how do you control that you, the cut doesn't go into the paper? Well, you have to use a sharp blade. So if you're not using a sharp blade, you tend to press too hard because it's not cutting well. And so I always start with a fresh blade to make sure it's sharp. And then uh, I change it out every periodically. And it is a really good idea to practice um, before working, you know, putting tape on something that you've um that you've uh you know got going and you want want to uh do as a, a painting i would practice um using the blade and the tape and uh there have been those that have cut into their paper so i would say it's just a matter of practice mm -hmm. thank you so much you're but welcome it's essential to have a a, a sharp blade yes thank yeah. you now, the other part of this background is I will um, let this sit. And if it's not quite dark enough, I'm okay um, letting it dry and then coming back and doing another layer. So um, sometimes I try to put the backgrounds in all at once and uh, see if I can get my colors the way I want them that first time. And then sometimes I do have to go back and add another layer. Okay, so then. I will just add some green appetite now, even though I think parts of this might need to go darker, um, but just taking a little bit of green appetite while this is damp and adding some of that to give the look kind of, of some foliage and green appetite's very granulating as well. So it just will add to that look. And I wanted to, um, kind of bring in some of the green that is in the bird into the background. Okay. And I think I'm going to try one more time just to really go grab some of the violet before this is totally dry. See if I can get it to it's almost like I have to really uh, continue with the adding some pigment to parts of for the lunar violet. It wants to, um, as I said, it wants to lighten. So if I want it quite a bit darker, then I have to keep going back to it. And it seems to be working better now. Okay, so that you guys are not watching me um, paint little dots around my paper all day. I will pause there and I will bring over the painting with the background done. This. I'm going to just leave that one flat over on my other table. So here you can see 
Um, I have darker values back in here and uh, just pretty much what I was doing uh, on the first painting. And I have my bird ready to go. So I'm going to quickly clean my palette. So now would be a great time for questions if anyone has those. There is a question, Lorraine. Uh, actually, this has been asked a couple of times. Ashley, you're breaking up. I know I lost. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you hear me better now? Yes. Okay. Um, there's a couple questions in the chat about what photo editing software you're using. Um, I have two options. So uh, I use Corel Photo um, Paint, and so it's very similar to Adobe Photoshop, um, but it was what I started with when I did graphics. And uh, I used to do computer graphics, and so I just kept going with it. Um, so uh, for me, that's, that's what I use. And I know... Um, before I, I guess before I say that, I'll interrupt myself. The other is Affinity. And Affinity Photo is a very similar to Adobe from my understanding. Um, it is, uh, one second here, let me think of what I'm, okay. Um, it is, uh, it's got a lot of power of things that you can do with it, um, but it's not a subscription program. So you can, uh, purchase the program, and I want to say it's under $100 or around $100. It's, uh, I believe, somewhere in England that it was created, and uh, it is um, really powerful, I think. And that's what I use when I uh, take pictures of my paintings, because I scan my paintings in. I don't photograph them to send to shows, so I scan them in using my Epson scanner. I have a blog post about this on my website. And I uh, photograph, or I mean, I scan them and then I stitch them back together using Affinity Photo. And so those would be my go to softwares. Thank you. You're welcome. And I think I saw someone else ask early on how long I've been painting, and I've been painting for about 29 years now. Okay. All right, so when I start a bird or something with an animal or a figure in it, I like to start with that subject, um, not necessarily all the other pieces. So I will be focusing on the bird. If I get a chance to uh, do something with the flower, I, I'll show you that one of those. But for now, I'll just start up with the hummingbird. And I am going to start, they have a little bit of white on the neck. Maybe I'll just zoom in a little. So I start with the lighter parts and there's a little bit of white on this bird's neck and there is some that's sunlit, but the part that's in shadow, I am going to come in with kind of a muted purple. So I'm using cobalt and a little bit of Quinn Lilac and then I'm just going to add a little bit of my Quinn Burnt Scarlet. I mean, it's very minimal. So I want to mute it just a touch. I guess I don't really need to use my big brush for this, but uh, it does come up in here. And it's got a shadow right down into here. So I just am starting with this shadow color and I am going to use a touch of water on the edge to blur it. So I don't necessarily want this to be a hard edge on this side. And I could have put some water down first as well. And I use the biggest brush I can until I need to get into all the little details. And it's partly because these guys have really good points that I can work with them for a long time. And then the other thing that I'm going to start with is this bird has, um, this is a dark chinned hummingbird. And he has um, kind of a um, muted tan underneath some of these green feathers up in here. 
So I want to look at putting down a uh, light value over his head or her head, because I'm not quite sure which this is, to get started on the head. And there are some brighter greens up in here. Um, so I will be avoiding painting right where those bright greens are because I want that to have that brighter green and not be slightly muted with um, some of the Quinburnt Scarlet under it. Let's see. And I'll just bring it down. There is some light on this right side. So I'm going to stay back from that, lift that off just a touch. And I'm actually going to leave that alone, that highlight that's on this side until later. And then I can decide if I want anything in there. May just a, a few marks might be all I want. Um, and a little bit down in here. So this first part can go kind of slow because I feel like this is sort of my roadmap. It's giving me an idea of where I want to place my color, even though it may go, may go a lot darker later. I just switched and grabbed some of the Quinbert Scarlet. So you can see, even though I'm changing the look of it, I'm using some of the same color I used in the background. And there is a highlighted edge here. I don't know if I want color along that edge. I think I will leave that for now. And then I'm going to switch and go over to the wing on the left. Let's see. So this guy, a little more green. I pulled out a uh, green gold. And this is sort of a new mix that I'm playing with. So this painting for me is just kind of trying things to see what, what works and if I like it, um, along with creating a painting. Uh, so green gold, because the hummingbirds often have a fluorescent look to their feathers, they actually have little tiny bubbles of, uh, I think it's like oxygenated little tiny um, bubbles in their feathers that creates the uh, reflective uh, look to them. Okay. And let's see, I do see a little bit of the lime green on the back in here. So I'll put that on and then I'm going to dry this right quick and I can get moving on the head. And I'm playing with these, changing the green that's in here a little bit warmer at times with the Quinburnt Scarlet and then more of the green gold in places. Okay, and I'll just soften that edge. I'll dry, um, one more thing. I like to interrupt myself, <laughs> seems like when I'm talking and sometimes I interrupt myself when I'm painting, I guess too. There's, there's a little bit of green gold up, right up in here as well. Okay, dry that. And one of the reasons I start around the head for the bird, um, even if I add color elsewhere, is that I feel like if the head of the bird or the animal or the person is working, that even if the rest of that person or animal or, or bird is looser or maybe not, um, not as detailed, not as described, then it's uh, as long as the head works and the eye works, then. I am happy with it and I'll, I'll continue painting it. Okay, 
So I am going to switch brushes. So leave that one aside. And I like ultramarine turquoise for some of the um, kind of brighter greens that are on hummingbirds. And uh, I will often mix it with a yellow or uh, I may use it straight if I'm seeing that. So I think I'm going to use my uh, hands uh, medium with the ultramarine turquoise for some of the feathers that are up on the head. And I just want to start placing some of these in. Now there are, um, in general, trying not to get too detailed too quickly um, is good for when you're doing a painting. Depends on what you're doing though, because if I'm painting glass, as some of you that do paint glass know, um, sometimes you do have to just start in with the details and, and figure out where you are because it can get really confusing otherwise. Um, but for hummingbirds and some animals, I will get into the details a little sooner than I might on other uh, subjects. So I have to get into those little bitty feathers. I like this Quinburnt Scarlet mix with the green gold. So now that I've kind of got my direction here a little bit, I can start getting my colors and my values stronger. I do want a touch of that in here as well. And right now the lighter part of the head is way too light, but that will go darker. I pulled out some Indian Throne. And right around the eye, there are some darker feathers. And again, I'm using a somewhat bigger brush in here. It will end up, I will go down to a smaller brush in a little bit. See a touch of green gold down in here. I'm gonna pause on that and add Okay. So in here, part of the reason I'm going back and forth is I see both greens and browns in this area. So I'm playing with what exactly, um, just kind of layering, which I really love about watercolor, the ability to layer and have some of that earlier color peek through. Lorraine, are you still using the size 20 brush or have you switched? I've switched, this is my 16. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, if I, you know, if I really wanted to, I could switch um, back, but, I, I think there's a little bit of, you know, like I might as well um, be able to get into smaller areas at this point. And um, nope, don't do that. I had green gold and Quinn burnt scarlet on my brush, which was working for the brown I wanted. And then I went to pick up some Indian Throne and that's just, it was wrong. <laughs> the wrong color. It's better just to step away. Okay, so I wanted this a little cooler in here. And okay, 
So I'm going to dry that. So generally when I'm painting though, I will work in a variety of areas. I'll go from one area to the next. I don't use a dryer that much um, until I get to the point where I can't paint somewhere else. And right now this is looking very sketchy because I'm trying to get a lot done and show you different parts of it. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's looking kind of odd because of how I'm painting it. But in general, I would lay down one color, then I might come back and put the next color on. I might work in one area for a little while, go off and do some other area and then come back and, and continue from there. So, all right. So I'm going to get the green on top of that. And I want to mute the green just a touch back in here. So I put the, actually, I think I'm going to go just add this on. Uh, I put the uh, ultramarine turquoise with a touch of the um, Hansa medium in it to make it a little greener. And then I added a touch of Quimbert Scarlet to it. Okay, so I am going to avoid that area for a little bit and I'm going to go up to the top of the head and I will start working with my darker brownish muted brown. So this is Indian Throne and a touch of Quinbert Scarlet in it. And these guys are the feathers that come across the top of the head and they do uh, have sort of a C shape to them and they curve uh, back from the beak. So I'm just trying to mimic that. I don't, yeah, I guess it is showing up. I feel like I want just a touch of the ultra turquoise in here. And I will get these in. And then I need to Actually gonna switch and add just a little bit of burnt umber. Back in here. Okay. Uh, so I have a shadow. Actually, before I do the shadow, I'm going to add some ultra turquoise to this area. And this first pass of ultramarine turquoise I'm mixing colors here, ultra turquoise. Okay, the first pass of ultramarine um, is going to be kind of pale, but it will give me a start on where these feathers sit. A little more blue in there. And then as I'm coming down, I see a more olivey green kind of right in here. Maybe a touch of that in here. So even though I will describe some of these feathers a little more in a few seconds, um, I am thinking about it as sort of just a big pass of color right now. There is a highlight right here. So I'm going to come down just a touch and then I'm going to add some water to the paper. And that water will give me a soft highlighted area. And then I'll keep painting beyond that.
This edge is just slightly more muted. It's in the shadow over here. So I added just a touch of my burnt sienna to that area. I may have to go back to the highlight and lift just a touch because it's moving a little, little far on me. And I think I'm going to pause right there. This side of the feather is um, browner, but it does have a little bit of the ultramarine turquoise. So um, I may be painting it with a little bit of burnt, quin burnt scarlet, and then adding a touch of the ultramarine turquoise in there. I'll leave some lines. So I dried the back of my brush and you can see the um, feathers in here separating just a touch. So I'm going to leave it like that, I believe, for now and later I can add, once that's dry, I can add some ultramarine turquoise. And where this moved in a, a little too far, I'll go ahead and lift this now. It's still damp enough I can come into that and maybe a little right down in here as well. And those highlights are going to really help me with the feeling of light on my subject. So I want to make sure that I don't lose them completely. And I want to go back up on the head and I am using a small flat brush with a little water on it to just pull back a little around those green feathers. Okay. I'm going to dry this. Great. We've got uh, we've had some requests to have um, a moment of uh, zooming in. Okay. Uh, we'll do that. Thank you. See if I can do it with my left hand. I mean, my right hand and left hand drawing. <laughs> Thank you. Uh huh. All right, so I've got kind of a, a map, as I call it, or a base of different colors and a little bit of some patterning gets the um, feathers started, but I have shadows that need to go in. I have more um, feathers and things that need to go in. Um, make sure that's dry. Okay, and I'll go ahead and move this up a little. One of the things that I wanna do right quick before I go up to the head and work on that again, is that the feathers on the side of the body on this right side, I can go ahead and get a, a base coat for them. And I'm going to use my Quinburnt Scarlet and the touch of the Indian Throne. And um, I think I'll be bringing in some of the um, green gold as well. I am going back and picking up more of the Quinbert Scarlet and just again, this is a base coat. So it, it'll be just a big shape. It'll have a little bit of color change here and there, but it gets me started. And there are some highlights on the left side. I'm gonna pull in just a touch of green gold before this dries. So this is, I'm basically charging in a little bit of that vibrant green gold in there. And that's because I'm seeing uh, a little bit of a, a greenish tinge to some of those feathers. Need some more Indian Throne. And go ahead and fill this 
wing in down here. And then I'm going to be hopefully holding my breath. So I can catch this upper edge. Just a little line right there. So you could mask that if you didn't want to try to paint around it. Um, but I have not. So I just, I'm trying to get the very tip of my brush to touch the paper. And that's why it does help to have nice, nice pointed brushes. So I've got a little bit of a highlight on those edges and that's going to help separate the wing from the background as well. All right, so now we have to go make some, um, combine some things to make them make sense and uh, just kind of fill it out a little bit more. I have um, had students where they feel like, oh, it's just not working. And it's partly because you just haven't added enough layers and it could be values as well, but sometimes it's just coming back in and bringing in enough um, pattern and texture and layers. So I am going over some of those. Okay, I'll leave that. And I'm going to go on uh, the side of the neck one more time and then I can add, finish adding. There's just a little more value over here that's a little darker. Okay, so I can dry that. And then I can um, come in with my shadow. So I think I'm going to use Indian Throne and Ultramarine Turquoise for my shadow. And we need the values around those areas that I uh, put some shadow on earlier that are actually white on the bird. I need my values around those white areas to be dark enough so that that color doesn't read as um, blue. It needs to feel like it's a muted uh, white, basically. So if I have my color around there dark enough, then and, uh, I don't think that's going to be it. What do I want to do? I'm going to add just a touch of uh, Quinn Magenta. Quinn Magenta is a uh, purpley red and it's a little muted compared to some reds. So adding a little bit of that to my shadow, which is ultramarine turquoise, it's basically two blues at this moment until I added the Quinn Magenta. All right, so I'm going to bring the shadow down the side of the head and some of those earlier patterns and textures, little di different colors, will peek through once this starts to dry. Right now it's going to feel um, just kind of flat until it starts to dry. And I need to come over just a touch more. And I'll bring this down over these guys. And I want some of the edges to be um, not not too straight because I'm going around feathers. And it does come a little closer to this edge as well. And then right here, because it's feathers and it goes up into that white area just a little bit, this darker value, I want that edge to look 
uh, feathery. So I'm making sure that it's not too straight. And then the shadow comes down over the back. And ends right about here. We need to let that dry. And while that's drying, I'm going to, actually, I'm going to switch brushes. Okay, now I'm getting down into some of the de detail-y things. And so I'm looking for just those little feathers and some of the darker marks. And they do go down the side of the head and then to here. Okay, right now this is, um, <laughs> it's looking uh, a little disjointed to me. Lorraine, would that be a number 12 brush? Uh, this is an eight. Yeah. Eight. I'm going to put the eye in. Um, that always helps me sort of see the values because it's so dark and also uh, just starts to make it feel like it has a personality. And so I like to use Thalo Blue Green Shade and Permanent Alizarin Crimson. And so uh, you want a lot of pigment, very little water in the mix for both of those. And it's really just a, just a deep purple. Um, but if you get the mix, pretty good, it gives you the look of black. And I would rather have more color on my palette, more pigments, and not have to put a black on my palette. So I always tend to mix my blacks. And his eye is slightly rounded at the front. And then I did, I don't always, but I did add just a little highlight. I don't know that I masked it though, so I'll be painting around the highlight. And I feel like that adds a little bit of life to the bird's eye. And then you can also come back and um, lift a secondary highlight, but I'll wait on that because it has to dry some. So I can see my paint is, I put out some new paint this morning on the Quinbert Scarlet and it's so wet, I keep grabbing too much. I'm used to having to wet it a little bit. Okay, so I can see that on the side of his head over here, I need to bring in some feathers to make this make a little more sense right there. And a little, um, not too even, it was too straight a second ago. And then right under the bird's eye, which I need my readers for. It's just a little too far away from me. Um, I want to bring in just a little bit of a small line. They do have, it's almost like they have uh, eyelashes that curve around around the eye. And then he's got just a touch of color 
right up here because this is way too flat. So I'm pulling down the color that I put in just above. A little color in there. Okay. Lorraine, there is a question in the chat saying, would you share in Daniel Smith's blog the colors in your palette? Sure. Um, and I have it on my, I'm, I'm fine doing that. I have a, a handout that I use um, and I have it on my website as well. But yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah, thank you. So if we can find it in your website. Yeah, um, on my blog post, uh, there is one that talks about my my palette. And uh, one of the things um, I have on my, so I have, I think there's maybe four colors that are not Daniel Smith, but all the rest are. And some of those are because um, I couldn't get the color that I wanted. And I just, there's certain colors that I've used for a while and really like. So, but yeah, I think it's just four. Um, so I realized earlier, that I was, sorry, go ahead. A little earlier, we also had some questions asking if you ever scrub out colors. And also at the beginning with your laying in the background, mm -hmm. do you ever go back into the background? Do you have to rewrite everything, just a portion or not at all? Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, um, I will go back into backgrounds and uh, I sometimes will re the whole thing and, and work on the whole thing. Sometimes I will just uh, do a portion of the background. And, and if it's a wet on wet situation, I may want um, just like, maybe I just want to put a little color up in here. I will wet around that area and maybe I come out maybe a couple inches from uh, where I uh, want to put the color. So if I wanna put color right here, I may wet over in here and then put the color right here so that uh, if I want those soft edges that when it touches the water, it's going to um, give me uh, that, that soft edge. And uh, it, you know, so you don't have to wet the whole background. You can wet this portion of it. Um, and then I do lift color. So um, that is definitely part of one of my uh, tools that I use. So, and uh, I think I'm trying to move through this guy a little fast today. So some of my uh, marks, I'm not being as careful with. I'll show you a hummingbird when I'm done that uh, I've done in. Um, that I really have enjoyed. Um, these guys are so much fun to paint. They have so much character. And I took some pictures of a hummingbird in the rain and was really um, enjoying painting them recently. So I do have uh, right now a change of value from here to here because I had an underpainting there. And so I need to go back in and put some definition and also some darker values in parts of this. Because there are some bigger feathers under here. Lorraine? Yes. We actually don't have to like uh, finish the entire piece um, if you need more time to complete it. But I think uh, this part, we, we could, if you could extend for another three to five minutes, just so our guests could learn, um, comes to working on details. And then the rest can, of course, just be uploaded on your IG. Okay, perfect. Someone was asking about the colors that you would use for the flowers. So, um, yeah, I have kind of played with that in my color study. So, 
uh, I used Quinn Red and it really kind of mimics um, the red in the flower. And mm -hmm. in the uh, warmer part of the base of the flower, I uh, used some Quinn Sienna to go a little oranger. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I will um, definitely uh, share this with everyone. And um, a lot of our guests are, um, especially in Facebook, saying their, uh, their thank yous and appreciation for how you presented today. It's difficult to be painting and answering many questions at the same time, <laughs> but you're good at it. No problem. Yeah, I, I totally uh, understand because sometimes you'll be watching something and you have a thought or question mm -hmm. right then. So, okay, so just continuing to build the feathers. And you can see on this outside edge, I came back with a little bit of the Quinbert Scarlet and going around some of my lighter values, leaving some of that peeking through. And I do want to, I think I'll go up and put the first layer of the beak in. Uh, and so I'll use the same mix that I did for the eye. So this is a uh, phthalo blue green shade and a little bit of Quinn, a permanent alizarin crimson. And this upper part of the beak is caught the light so it's very uh, it's a lighter value and then the side of the beak will be darker and I'll give that a second or two to start to lose the shine let's see right here a little darker and Ethel, if it's okay, I'll bring, I'll pause for a second. I'll show, uh, I'll just grab it off the side here, a painting that I did of a hummingbird in the rain. And you can see the more completed hummingbird. Lorraine, do you ever use white in your bird paintings? In the head or in your flamingos, for example? No, I like the white of the paper. And so I, uh, I just prefer to paint around the whites. And whether they need whether I need to come back and add a little bit of uh, shadow color to them, or if they're just pure white. And uh, yeah, I, I I like transparent pigments, and so that tends to be um, my preference is just to have the the white of the paper. That's why also why I use bright white paper because I like that um, glow. Do you always work from a printed photo, or sometimes with digital, so you can um zoom in i do both um so when i especially when i'm doing glass uh i like to have a uh my image on a tablet or my computer and then i can really uh get up close uh, into an area and see um, the different parts of uh, the objects so yeah it's it is very helpful sometimes just to have it on um, something that you can zoom in. Yeah, absolutely. Lorraine, what's the status on using mask or the tape as far as the national groups, the watercolor societies? I know they used to be like that you shouldn't do any of that. Um, I don't think I've seen any of that lately. So if you look at prospectus, they're not um, saying you can't use that. It's um, I don't know if I hadn't ever really heard that before. Um, it's uh, it's not been something I've seen. It's more, uh, you know, it has to be your own photo. It has to be, um, for some groups, it has to be transparent versus uh, a mix of transparent and uh, opaque or opaque at all. And uh, so, yeah, I, I don't feel like um, that's a, 
thing in the prospectus that I've seen. So maybe it used to be, and I just wasn't aware of it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So really what I'm doing right now is just trying to beef up this shadow area just a touch more. And uh, I will probably have to come back to that, but it's giving me a little bit of some darker values within that area. And uh, so I'll, I'll play with that some more before I'm done. Um, and so I'll come down onto a few of these feathers on the back and then um, I'll show you uh, a finished hummingbird over here off to the side. And on these bigger feathers, they do have some areas that are on top of the feather that are, uh, the hummingbirds have little tiny uh, feathers that come to line. So you could really get into the weeds with the feathers and do this kind of thing where you're making all the little lines on top of each of those feathers. But um, I, don't tend to do that for every hummingbird I do. Sometimes it's more just a bigger shape that I'm creating. And uh, this tends to be a lot of painting on dry paper. It's not necessarily wet on wet. Um, for instance, someone asked about me lifting. There is a little bit of a highlight uh, on this wing so I could come in here and just, well, not that one. Um, I have flat brushes that are softer and then some that are stiffer. So uh, I don't necessarily care for the um, scrubber brushes because I feel like they're a little too stiff, but I do like a stiffer bristle when I need it. And so this is just a, a craft brush that has a stiffer bristle so I can lift back. And Lorraine, mm -hmm. I think we're good at this um, point in time, and we'd like to give you some time to talk to our guests here. If you could wrap up like in a minute, and of course, we know you're gonna share it on your Instagram, and everyone else looking forward to you connecting on their comments on Facebook and also on Instagram. Feel free to do that. Great, so, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'll show you this one painting right quick. So uh, this is just one that I was doing recently and you can kind of see the hummingbird a, <laughs> a little more completed. And uh, this guy was um, in the rain and just enjoying getting wet. And so um, I played with lunar black in this painting in the background and I like all of the textures and things that were going on in it and uh, kind of blurry edges and so, um, yeah, just to kind of give you an idea of where you can go with coming. Well, Lorraine, what was the white in there? Is that the paper? Did you block, yeah. block it off? Yeah, that's white on the paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, these edges were softened. So I removed, uh, th these were masked and then uh, removed the mask, softened edges, and then put some color on top of those areas. Mm -hmm. So some is white, um, but some has color. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lorraine. You've shared a lot of tips today and paint and answer questions at the same time. Uh, you've been generous with your time. Uh, so I think we're good for today. Let me just put us all in gallery so that Lorraine gets to see everyone else. We were around, I think, good steady number of 135 guests in Zoom alone, Lorraine. And so oh, thank you on, on Facebook. And again, yes. Just want to say thank you to everybody. <laughs> Thanks to Lorraine for your time and for your generosity of insights and tips today. Uh, this session is recorded. Uh, the stream will always be available up on Facebook and also on YouTube. So happy Friday, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the weekend and look forward to Lorraine's post of the final piece on her Instagram and Facebook. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank Wonderful you. Wonderful demo. Thank, Thank you. you.